Hello, welcome once again. Uh, trying to clear up some issues about uh, first schematics, but also uh, warning systems in your car. First of all, we all are familiar with the check engine light. We're all familiar when you leave a door open, the light in the dashboard or the instrument cluster comes on. Or if you have the parking brake on, while you try to move, obviously, there's a brake light for that. Also, there's something if you don't put your seat belts on, there is a buzzer to tell you, hey, you have to put your seatbelts on. We all know how seatbelts are very important. As you can see, it saved uh, Tiger Woods' life with the airbags. Uh, uh, ten airbags saved his life, so very critical. So anyway, there are times that we need the ground, and there are times when you open and you don't need a ground to complete the path. Let's start from the beginning. So you have warning systems. Okay, you get in your car, you turn on the car, all the lights turn on in the instrument cluster through a self-test. Now, let's say this fuse over here, this is the central fuse. What do I mean, what do I mean by the central fuse? It is a common fuse. There is a system here for the seatbelts. There is a system over here for the brakes. There is a system over here for the oil pressure, like we said, the lift gate and also the coolant temperature. This fuse is common to all of these systems. So obviously if this, if this fuse opens up for whatever reason, it will knock out all the systems, including for the seat belts. The lights will not come on. So starting from here, from the fuse, let's say this is a 10 amp fuse and it's a 18, number 18 fuse. So we know we have 12 volts at one side. If the fuse is good, we know we should have 12 volts at both sides. So now coming down this way, we have other paths. Remember, this is also for, let's say if you, have, if you need gas or fuel, this is also, there's a warning system for the fuel. Okay, now, coming down over here, like we said, this is a red wire with a white stripe will give it that definition. So we come down over here, we have a check engine light we set over here. We come down this path over here. Then we see that this path over here goes to a green wire with a white strap, or you could call it the white with a green stripe, whatever you want to call it. Going to a red wire with a white stripe, if you want to call it that, goes to a ground. And this coolant temperature switch closed when hot. What does that mean? If you have the, the temperature gauge, the coolant temperature gauge in your car, okay, there's a certain temperature where obviously you overheat. In the summertime, we know you hit sometimes 210, maybe 220 with the air conditioning on, especially when you're in idling, especially when you're in traffic, it gets hot and hot and hot. So therefore, the coolant temperature uh, a switch will be closed when hot. So let's say it'll be very, very hot. Let's say it'll be 270, 280, really, really get hot. There has to be a warning to the driver. Hey, you know what? Engine is getting hot, right? Risk of overheating. So therefore, check engine light comes on. But when does it come on? It has to have a ground. And this is what I drew over here, the ground, the complete ground. When the coolant temperature switch closes let's say this is the cooler to temperature switch when it closes because why it got very hot it's getting very hot in the in the engine compartment of your car it has to tell the driver this gives a a ground see this typically this is the open switch but it closes, as I showed you over here, right to ground. When it goes right to ground, this is going right to ground. Now the check engine light can go on because it has a complete path to ground. So therefore, the problem is the coolant temperature the sensor and the coolant temperature switch work together. So in other words, your coolant temperature switch closes when it's hot because the coolant temperature sensor senses that it's hot. Therefore, we need a ground. The check engine light gets a ground. This is a bulb. The bulb needs a ground, okay, for it to light. If this is open, if the switch is open, guess what? 
then the check engine light cannot go on. When does it close? When it gets too hot. So let's say you're at 180 degrees, 190 degrees. Will the check? Will this check engine light, this bulb, be on? No. Why? Because this is still be open. It's not hot enough. Let's say you're reaching the red mark, right? You're in Florida. You're in traffic for a half hour, and it's getting hot and hot. Will this be open position or closed position? It'll be in the closed position, telling you that that guess what? You. It's getting too hot, you might overheat. Let's go to these things over here. Oil pressure switch open with oil. You ever see the oil pressure switch? There's a certain pressure that's okay. At a pressure below that point, this, this switch, uh, switch will be closed. At a certain point after the oil pressure switch, it'll be open now let's clarify on that because it sounds very complicated and it sounds confusing oil pressure switch will open with oil pressure above 5 psi so let's say when you get into your car cold day right guess what your oil pressure gauge will be around maybe 35 or 40 it's right because the oil is still thick therefore guess what in which position is this this will be in the open position and your check engine light will not come on when will this come on and this is the confusion of this your your oil pressure switch will come on below 5 psi so let's say you're at 4 psi computer says that's too low that's not that's not healthy for the engine right therefore what happens to the switch? It closes to ground, the opposite. It closes because the oil pressure is too low. It's not above 5 PSI. It's below 5 PSI in this example. So therefore, since it's low, guess what? It closes it, gives this a path to ground, and now the bulb comes on, you have a check engine light. Very confusing. Very confusing. So therefore, as long as you're over 5 PSI, if let's say I'm 10 PSI, 15 PSI, 20 PSI, I'm good. Therefore, he will be in the open position. Therefore, check engine light will be off. If I'm at 2 PSI, 1 PSI, 3 PSI, guess what? He'll give him a ground. Now the check engine light will be on. You're in trouble. Now, let's say you open up the cargo, the, the cargo door, the lift gate, they call it. Same idea, same concept, okay? Now, current flow through here, another one. Now you have a bulb over here. What happens with the bulb? What do we need for this bulb to be lit? We need a ground. When will you get a ground? Guess when? When you open up the trunk or the lift gate, they call it. When you open up, the, the I guess, the, the glass, they call it, like a, some on SUVs. And when you open it up, you're closing a path to ground, as I indicated over here. Then the bulb comes on to tell you, hey, the trunk is open or you have a problem with the trunk or closing the trunk. That's when this will come on. What about the parking brake? You put the parking brake, right? You left your car in the daytime uh, uh, overnight. You put the parking brake on. You go in the morning to work and you, st and you start the car. And you say, oh, man, right? Wow, this car is not moving. Why? Because you have the parking brake switch on. What will tell you that? Brake indicator will tell you that. How does he know? Because he gets a ground. If you apply the parking brake switch, he gets a ground. And what does that mean? He has a path to ground. And now the bulb lights. So it depends. As you can see, it's a little tricky. When is it open? When is it closed? That's why I indicated this needs a close over here. See this? This means it's a ground. He needs a ground. This over here is open. So in other words, he'll get a ground, again, below 5 PSI. Anything above 5 PSI? Let's make this sim simpler. This will be open open switch above more than 5 PSI.
this will be open. Anything below that, it'll be, so if it's less than PSI, 5 PSI, it'll be closed. Same thing over here. Now with the buzzer circuit, and this is the parking brake circuit. Parking brake circuit switch, it's closed that we said. Here's a closed switch. We need a closed switch to give us the brake indicator that's on. So all these will be 12 volts here, 12 volts over here, 12 volts over here. How much will I get if I'm in a closed position to the ground? If I'm at ground, I'll get a zero. The whole voltage will be across where? This bulb. 12 volts here, zero volts here. How much do I have across this? 12 volts across the whole light, the bulb when it's lit, when the check engine light is on. Let's say it's not. Let's say this is in the open position. How much will I have over here? Well, this is floating. Therefore, this will be 12 volts, not zero volts. How much, if I have 12 volts over here, 12 volts over here, how much do I have across this bulb? Zero volts, it's not gonna light. Now, this is a timing circuit. When you, when you, when you get in your car, you turn, on, you turn on the ignition switch and all that. There's a timing circuit, okay? Certain amount of time that it gives you to put your seat belts on. So, in the olden days, or some older cars, actually, when uh, usually the Fords, you got in your car, it automatically put the seatbelt on. You didn't have to put it on manually. You put it on automatically. Now, if you have to put it on yourself, there's a timer circle, like we said. It'll count, and it'll see, and it'll say, okay, four or five seconds, you turned on the ignition. You haven't put on the seatbelt, right? That's a timing circuit right here telling you, guess what? Here it is. Do we need a ground or open ground? Seat belt buckle switch open with belt buckled. What does that mean? That means that this is open. Like I drew over here. This is open. See? This is open to ground. When? When you put when you close your seat belt. If you did not put your seat belt on, you got in your car or your passenger, sometimes your dashboard will will even get buzz or give an indication when your passenger didn't fasten their seatbelt, right? Therefore, this means it's close to ground. Why? Because the buzzer is going on. For the buzzer to go on and to indicate that to you by, the, by this bulb of the seatbelt, you have to have a ground and you have to have a ground through this. So in other words, let's make it simpler. Let's make it simpler. You got in your car. You put on your seatbelt even before you started your car, the ignition switch. That's the best thing to do. What will happen? This will be in the open position, right? It might go through a self-test to see if the buzzer is working, everything is working, but that light will go out. Let's say you put on the ignition switch. You got in your car, right? You're almost ready to drive. Uh-oh, I forgot to put my seatbelt and my passenger forgot to put this. Let's say you're, you're a, a taxi driver. You have someone next to you in the front. Even though taxis don't have people in the front, they only have them in the back. But let's say, let's say you have someone in the front, okay? That, that you started your car, and I say, hey, you don't have your seatbelt on to the, to the passenger. As soon as that pa passenger buckles up, this opens, this is in a closed position, this opens, and guess what? No path for the buzzer to ground, buzzer will go off because your seatbelt is on. Just like Tiger Woods had her seatbelts on, that saved his life. Like we said, 10 uh, uh, airbags saved his life all over on the sides, on, on the front, all over. He could have sustained... Worse injuries than he did. He is a lucky man. So therefore, the more safety features you have in your SUV, especially after a rollover like he had, the more better off you are in life. It'll save your life. The uh, One thing I always go with with cars, I like the old cars. Why? Because they have a, a long trunk in the back and they have a, a, uh, a long... Uh, uh, in the front, they have a lot of uh, um, protection in the front, the old cars, as you remember. The new cars, obviously, they got smaller and smaller and smaller. There's sometimes you don't even see a trunk in the back. Therefore, if someone hits you in the back, you're relying on 
Guess what you're relying on? Seatbelts and you're relying on airbags. But I, I always like a, a, a big trunk like the old Crown Vicks and all those. Really safe cars and uh, frame cars. All frame cars. Strong cars. So anyway, this is the protection of your life right here. The seatbelts, the timing, the buzzer. And like we went over the other one. Uh, and also, so questions about... Um, about the fuel pumps in, in Toyotas, the recalls, uh, I received a comment. Once they put a, another uh, a fuel pump that they're having the issues with in these, like we said, uh, like the video said, in Toyota Camrys and other cars and other vehicles, you don't know if it's going to work that quick. You don't know if that's the quick fix right away. So you still have to wait a while until they put the new fuel pump, see if it helps. Because there was an issue for those who don't know that the fuel pump was just shutting off for these Toyotas. And I made a video about that. So they said, obviously, they're going to replace it, obviously. Once you replace it, you still don't know if that's the fix. And this is what I'm uh, trying to issue, address the issue. Someone asked that. So take your time with these cars. After all, a fuel pump is a serious issue. It shuts off the car, like we said. No fuel pressure. Okay? If the air condition doesn't work... Also, not, not, not convenient to say the least in Florida, but it's not a safety issue. A fuel pump shutting down or stalling, that's a big problem, obviously. So therefore, take your time with these cars, like I said, when they have a recall. See when they put the new part, if it actually helps. Give it a while. See if that's the fix. And then if you want to acquire one, hey, you know, it de depends on your judgment so that's the most i can say anyway please go to my channel joe electronic schematics for auto my other one automotive electronic schematics by joseph i need ten thousand more minutes for that one to get monetized um like i said this fuse breaks or opens or blows guess what guess what you lose the seat belts you lose when you open up the doors or the cargo door in this case you lose that one you lose the check engine light. You lose the brake indicator. Why? Because this feeds all the systems. Look at the wires. All the systems are fed here. Okay? So, therefore, I hope this was informative. And remember, remember, like I said, a SUV is a great vehicle. Even though now they're making these crossovers and all these things with these cars. And, obviously, it's, it's different. They're not making it... Um, v8s anymore obviously as you can see hard to repair them and it's just not costly anymore so therefore guess what now you have to rely on safety features okay like i said um use your discre discretion thanks for watching